with Hashem's loving grace and with the schut, the privilege of being together with Rabbi Wolby and the Torch Organization. It's that deepest privilege Hashem, to be working together and bringing closer, uh, bring people closer to Hashem, wherever they are. We're delighted to continue on with Likutei Moran. We're now in part one, the first part of Likutei Moran, Torah six. Every discourse is called a Torah and part seven. But each point, each each portion is an individual module and we'll try to catch people up. Last week, we learned, uh, it was unbelievable, not, not planned, but right before Purim and right before Shabbat Zahor, uh, Rabbi Nachman taught us exactly how to obliterate the name of a Malik. We do that with our our atomic weapon. Our atomic weapon, our spiritual atomic weapon is the letter Aleph. And we learned how with the letter Aleph, we destroy a Malik. And so this is our secret weapon with unfathomable power. And after that letter Aleph, we have another 21 other letters. And Bo Hashem, this week we're going to learn the awesome secrets that are embedded in our ability to serve Hashem in the ups and the downs. In other words, life is like a Ferris wheel. So don't be complacent and don't boast when you're up because the wheel's going to go around. You might go down. And by the, we will, the ups and downs. That's a spiritual Newton, expansion and contraction. But when you're down at the bottom and you hit rock bottom, don't be upset. Don't be depressed because now you're going to go up. There's no place to go. No place to go but up. And Rabbi Nachman teaches us that we have to have two types of expertise. We have to know how to serve Hashem in the up times, times of ascent, and know how to serve Hashem in the down times, times of descent. And this is the secret to tshuva. Secret to tshuva, tshuva is, it's, it's the secret of our survival. And what people don't realize is that when it, we learn in Ethics of the Fathers, chapter four, when Rabbi Eliezer Ben Yaakov says, if a person does a mitzvah, he creates a positive angel. This is a defending angel, which you call, might call a guardian angel. And if a person transgresses Torah, he or she creates, heaven forbid, an accusing angel. This is the angel that comes up and, and complains and, and brings dinim. It brings stern judgments into the world. This angel itself is a stern judgment. So spiritually, all our enemies are created from our transgressions. In other words, we, heaven forbid, heaven forbid, with our own two hands, create our own enemies. So we have a situation now just to explain, and this is the type of a little bit of frustrating at home, where our government thinks they're going to win a war with, with with arms, but then they could keep on living a non-Torah lifestyle and trampling Torah. But that every time they do that, they, they say they say the humanitarian aid is is revi reviving Hamas. Every time a person says Loshan Haraf, every time a person breaks Shabbat, every time a person eats something not kosher, he says he's making a, a, a new new soldier for Hamas. This is the spiritual truth, exactly what's happening. So uh, people ask me, and this is right spot on with what we're learning in Torah 6. I get a lot of letters because of my background, the rabbi has years in the army. Rabbi, what, what can I do? What can I do to help the war effort? And they get a let, an answer that they don't expect. Oh, they're willing to do, go in the car. They're willing to give a lot of money. They're willing to visit soldiers. They're willing to go to base. They're willing to go to Gaza. But I said, the most thing the person could do for Am Yisrael right now is to do tshuva. Oh, no, that no. No, no, don't tell me to do tshuva, Robert. No, we got to. You do it for your own self. It, 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 it's for, for the good of yourself and your family to get the stern judgments out of your life. Okay, get the stern judgments out of life. And this is, get the, who doesn't want to get rid of sicknesses and people to, to, to get sick? Well, maybe the sickness came because of a person's transgressions and the, that person failed to do tshuva. A doctor's not going to help. A doctor's not going to be effective. If a person does tshuva, and he goes to the doctor, and all of a sudden, doesn't matter if the doctor gives him a sugar-coated pill instead of an antibiotic, it's going to succeed, because the shem will make it succeed. So this is the importance of tshuva. Tshuva is our existence. Tshuva is our, our whole mission in the world is to get closer to Shem. This is what Rebbe Nachman does in Lekutei Moran. Rebbe Nachman is not trying to show off what he knows. <laughs> he doesn't need to do that way up. But Rebbe Nachman, as one of the great tzaddikim of the generation and of all generations, because Rabbi Nachman, he's got an expression in Yiddish. He says, my fire will burn until Mashiach comes. What does that mean that my fire will burn until Mashiach comes? It means that his teaching is going to take us all the way up to, to Mashiach. 
Rebbe Nachman, it teaches us the light of Amuna, and this is what we have to strengthen ourselves in Mashiach, because we can't have Mashiach if we're 40 white light bulbs. We have to prepare ourselves as 500 white light bulbs with the illumination of Amuna. So this week, uh, we're going to learn some really deep secrets. Rebbe Nachman takes them right out of Kabbalah, right out of the Arizal's writings, and to make sure understood when and, and learn them inside in, in, in the source, uh, try to simplify it as much as we can and to make it comprehensible because it may be confusing and people upset, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to make, we have to, we have to, we have to get through this to understand where Rabbi Nachman is taking us. Uh, okay. So we, we're, we're in the uh, 10th paragraph, 10th part of Torah Vav. And this is when Rabbi Natan starts speaking. He says, up till now, we heard the words of Rabbeinu, verbatim, but now the end, Rabbi Natan, he wrote the continuation of Torah 6 in the name of Rabbeinu. And he would write, write the Rebbe's discourses down and show the Rebbe, the Rebbe would proofread them, okay. But up till now, we learned that the last uh, six lessons were Rabbi Nachman's language, verbatim. Okay, this is what Rabbi Natan says, that what Rabbi Nachman is teaching us is the secrets of Elul. Why secrets of Elul? Elul is the month that is especially devoted to tshuva. It's the month before the high holidays. Shematik sat ketipat me'ayam. He says, I heard a little bit like a drip in the sea. Says, everything, everything Rabbi Nachman's teachings that I heard, it's like uh, it affected the sea as if I, I, I took a drip out of the sea. I drew one drop out of the sea. I ain't shabba kavanot shal. Elul and Rabbi Nathan says, if you, you want to really learn this right, then go and learn in the Arizal, go learn in Kabbalah. He says, Ayen Shem. He says, go, go look there. Uh, if someone wants, it's in the gate of Holy Spirit, Shavuach HaKodesh, and one of the 15 volumes of the Arizal uh, but there, but don't suggest it. Don't suggest it. That it's not translated and it'd be difficult. Okay, so he says, I'm going to read it in Hebrew and then I'll translate it. Uh, for someone even who understands perfect modern Hebrew, I just spoke Mandarin Chinese or Sanskrit. Even for someone who understands Hebrew because this is all language of Kabbalah. Now I have to break it down. Okay, break it down and, and we'll go slow what we learn, but at least what we learn, we'll learn properly. Bezat Hashem. Uh, Rabbi Natan says, this is the hidden meaning of the intentions. We, what Kavona is my intention behind prayer. When a person prays, a person says the words of prayer. But when you intend, your intent, the intent in your heart behind the prayer, like some people say the words, but their minds are in business or in the ball game or somewhere else. That's their so they have they have the kavana, they have the intention of the, the daily news, but they're not in prayer. We're talking about a person who is immersed in prayer and he has an intention every time he says Hashem's name, he has a deep intention on what that particular name means. Now, Rabbi Nachman told Rabbi Natan, I'm going to teach you two forms of Hashem's name in Elul. And use that when you say Hashem's name. And if you listen to me, you're going to get big secrets. Well, one thing what Rabbi Nachman Nat was teaching Rabbi Natan is every day, actually every minute, every minute, no minute is the same. This minute is not the same as the previous minute. It'll never come back. It's there. But every single minute, every single hour, and every single day, is run by a combination of divine names. And if Hashem withdraws the divine name, the world goes in, the world ceases to exist. That's it. We say in Hebrew, chiladon, turns back into nothingness, like before Genesis, where the, uh, null and void, world null and void. So it is, it is Hashem's name that revives the world, vitalizes the world, gives the world the life force every single moment and every one of us. Okay, so Rabbi Nachman told Rabbi Natan that if you 
get the proper intent on the proper name and the proper day. And he took this that right of the Arizal. The Arizal has a list of every day in Elul and what name, which of Hashem's name to intend to. And Rabbi Nachman promised Rabbi Natan that he'll get the great spiritual heights, which Rabbi Natan did. He was Rabbi Natan, not only knew all the Gemara by heart and that all the Shulonor, but he was a mind boggling Kabbalist. And he's the student of Rabbi Nachman. As much as Rabbi Natan had all of Kabbalah on the palm of his hand, he wasn't near on the level of his rabbit. I can't even talk. It's like talking about uh, uh, it's, if I can see with the naked eye uh, where Pluto is and where Saturn is and how far they are. Now we're talking about heights, heights, and heights. When you're down in the valley and you're in the Himalayas, you can't tell which peak is higher than another peak. But as much as high as Rabbi Nathan was, he was Rabbi Nachman's student. Okay, so what the the intent, where did the holy Arizal take the intent? He took it out of Isaiah. Isaiah says a seemingly uh, subtle passage in chapter 43. Isaiah, say, Isaiah says, make yourself a way through the sea. Make a way through the sea. Derech bayam. Derech bayam. And that means that Rabbi Nachman picked this up, that you have to have a way that shines into the sea. And I'm talking cryptically, but I'm going to bring everything down. This, we'll explain everything. Okay. So what is this way? This way, if we take the secret of Hebrew words, way in Hebrew is derech. And dalit is a four. Arash is a 200. Achaf is 20. That's 224. Okay, and then there is a holy name called Yabak, Yud Beit Kuf. Yud Beit Kuf equals 112. This is a combination of the ineffable name 26, of the name A D O N A I, which is 65, and the name I am that I am, Ekia, which is 21. 21, 65, and 26 together. They are 112. Now, when we take the derech, which is 224, and we take the yabek, which is 112, we see that twice 112 equals 224. So if we have we have a derech, means that there's two ways. It's split into two, with the yabek. Okay, so we'll, we'll get that, that, that to more. That's a the twice the yabik, in other words, six of Hashem's name equals derech, equals a way. So what does this mean? This comes out of an aspect of another two holy names, which is called kasa, kuf, samach, aleph. It has a numerical value of 161. And sag, which is a combination of writing the ineffable name, filling in with yud's and aleph and the vav, that makes it come out to 63. And if you have 161 and 63, these come out to 224, again, derech. And this is what King Solomon indicates to us when he says, that all the rivers come to the sea. Everything comes back to this one central idea. This is something basic in Kabbalah. If all he says, it all comes down, what they call it in French literature, a denouement, when everything comes and comes in together. So, we see these names. How do we get the name 161? 161 comes from the name Ekia, E H Y E H, and it's you write it Aleph He Yud He, and we take the Aleph He Yud He, the Aleph, write them out. We write out the letters, not just the letter Aleph, but we write it out Aleph Lamed Pei. That's how you spell the Aleph. So this is this is called the Milui, the writing the letter in its fullness. And it comes out 111, and then the hey yud 15, and then the yud, yud vav dala, that's another 20, and then another hey yud 15, that comes down to 161. So a way of saying this comes 161. And then a way of spelling the ineffable name in its fullness is the yud, yud vav dala, that's 20, and then another hey 15, vav, vav, aleph, vav, which is 13, and then hey yud, another 15, that is 63. And so that, the name Kasa, which is 161, 
And the name Sag, which is 63, comes together and it makes 224, which is Derek. Okay. Now, Rabbi Nachman has got to make things a little more complicated. We know in Hebrew, <laughs> okay, see if this is take slowly. In Hebrew, we have vowels and consonants, but not like in English. In English, you have consonants A and E and O and U, and you add them to your vowels, which are the B and the P and the T and the S. Not in Hebrew. In Hebrew, we have vowels, and the consonants are dots that appear under the letters, or signs that appear under the letters. Okay, the different consonants. For example, one dot is called a chiric, and if you put a one dot under a bet, it's a B. One dot under a mem is me. One dot under a uh, taf is t. Okay. And then we have another vowel, which is three dots. It looks like a triangle. Two dots at the top, then the bottom dot. And that's called a segel. Because it, it's, if you put that under a bait, it's be. And under a mem, it's me. And under a taf, it's te. Okay. So this is, this is uh, these. Okay. So now... Rabbi Natan is bringing what he learned from Rabbi Nachman about the part of the vowels. So he says, He says, we have to think of the name Kasa, the name Ekia in its fullness, with punctuated with under each of the 10 letters, there is a segel, three dots. And the name Sag, the Yud Ke Vav Ke, which comes out to a gematria of 63 with a chirik, because each one would be e, e. Okay. So what does that mean? Rabbi Nachman explains, I'll translate, Rabbi Nachman explains, segel de chirik, de kasa de chirik, de sag emolim taf. That if we take 10 letters in each of these full names, and under every letter is a chirik in the sag, that is the sag, a chiric, one dot has a numerical value, just like the letters have a numerical value. One dot and the vowel of gematria of vowels, one dot equals 10. So a segel, which is three dots, equals 30. So if you take the 10 letters of the name sag and you multiply it by 10, you get 100. And if you take the 10 letters of the name kasa, and you under with you multiply it by 30 because each letter has three dots, you get 300. So now when you take the 100 with the 300, you get the sum of 400. Okay, so this together, this together gives us 400. And this is what he explains now. And in a moment, we're going to see what that is 400 because the name is spelled out uh, with the one name the the sag with a chiric and the name kasa with a segel okay now we come we go further let's take it nice and slow let's take it nice and slow and we go now rabbi Nathan explains shdam chiric the sag the segel the kasa le yachad taf now we got a big secret here. What's all this got to do to tshuva? Our sages tell us, the prophet tells us that when a person's tshuva is accepted by Hashem, Hashem outstretched hand accepts him in tshuva. Okay. Hashem's outstretched hand, this is outstretched right hand, it's called Yamin Pshuta. Wow. Now we go to Yamin Pshuta. Pshuta, which means outstressed. We look at here, outstretched. Pshuta, we take the pay, which is 80, and the shin, which is 300, and the vav, which is six, and then the tough, which is nine, and the hay, the tail, that is 400. So we take these dots under Hashem's name, and by Having the proper intent, when we say Hashem's name with the proper intent, this enables our tshuva to be accepted like butter. I just put anybody in 
putting your uh, on putting butter in a frying pan. It just it just uh, slips right in, goes right in. And there's something secret about this. The secret about this is that if a person is not sincere in his or her tshuva in a million years, they're not going to be able to think about that when they're saying Hashem's name. But Hashem gives them a prize when they're sincere about their tshuva. And if they're on that level of Torah, that they can focus on this name and then they get Hashem's outstretched arm and Hashem's outstretched arm. You know what it means when Hashem's outstretched arm accepts you in tshuva? It means that's your father in heaven. It's now you're, you're in the holy temple. You're ritually pure. You're complete. You're there's no bigger reward than this. So say, what, what's it? Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Nata doing this whole sound and light show with the gematrias and the confusion and all this. Nah, the whole thing. Rabbi Nachman says all he wants to do is to bring us close to Hashem because that's what the whole world is about. And that's all we're talking about. And it's pretty Amuna is bringing people close to Hashem. That's all. That's all. We're not the, this is the difference between our sages and a professor emeritus at, at Berkeley or at Oxford or at Cambridge. Just imagine a professor emeritus. Who could talk to him? <laughs> Who could talk to him? No, that's it. Our sage is there. So humble. We said that last week that uh, it goes together. It goes together with the, the true holiness has to go with humility. And so Rabbi Nachman is teaching his student, Rabbi Natan, and teaching all of us and this is how to go. Now, you can't learn this one time, like you're, you're studying a, a, a history test and you're remembering dates. No, you have to concentrate on, you have to pray for it. And this, it, it, it took a long time, took a long time for me to understand it, even took a longer time to, how do I begin to explain this? And that's why we had to make the table to, to break it down. Okay, so this, I understand Rabbi Nachman's Torah is not meant one time and there you go. Uh, this Torah 6 that we're learning, I think we, tonight and, and next week, hopefully next week we'll finish it. So that will be eight lessons. Uh, there are people in the Bresler based Midrash in, in Jerusalem. I know Rabbi Cheshen and Tishlech Temoran. They'll spend all year long learning this one Torah. All year long. And that, that's, how, that's how deep it is. Okay, but they keep it moving. So we see that the secret of the vowels under the holy name, they Invoke the outstretched arm where our tshuva is accepted. Because now, when, ooh, here's another secret. When the letters yamin, yamin is the right, the right hand, the outstretched arm. When they're spelled out, it's equal to derech, where there's three letters. If you take the, the word yamin and you spell them out, and that equals derech. That's, everything is coming in like a, 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 like a puzzle, like a 100,000 piece puzzle. Everything is fitting perfectly together, precision perfectly together. And all this is explained. I mean, so that's up here, up here now. All this is explained in the intents of Elo. Okay, so now we're up to the next letter, Yud Aleph. And Rabbi Nathan says, we're going to refer back to what we learned in letter four. I think that was our third lesson that we got to letter four, where we have to have two expertises. That was our second lesson. We have to be an expert in serving Hashem in the uptimes and downtimes, what we call the ascent and the descent. All right. What's all this got to do with that? So now we're going to learn that. So, see, it starts off confusing, but we go slowly. We understand little by little. And you see, this, this is a sound and light show. If you bear with it and, and you don't get frustrated, don't get flustered. And even if you don't understand, bear with me. I promise you, if you listen to the replay once or twice and look at the chart, once again, if you need the chart, you can ask Rabbi Wolby. Rabbi Wolby put it in our group. You can uh, send me on, on, our, on the WhatsApp group. And we give you a chart. Uh, if you need it, if you haven't printed out, look at the chart, take it little by little, and you could see this is we're talking about the secrets, some of the secrets in two letters and in two words of Torah. Crazy. It's it, it, it's a, it's a, unbelievable. So what is going on here? That we're uh, learning how to facilitate our chuva. Now 
it's also wonderful that we're learning now this in Adar, because just this Elul is a tshuva month before Tishrei. Elul is a tshuva out of fear. Adar is also a tshuva month, but it's tshuva out of love, because we're going into preparing ourselves for Pesach. So this is perfect that we learn this at this time. Uh, Rabbi Nathan says, "Misho rotzel lasot tshuva, sech shielo shtei bkiot, ane bki beratzo, the bki beshav, she de bchinat ayl vnafak, bchinat imasak shamaim shamata, she bchinat bki beratzo, vatzia sholi neka, bchinat bki beshuv kimvual ayl." Give a little introduction on this next, on uh, this next portion. In Psalm one thirty nine, King David makes a statement. King David says that really. He should have been bipolar. Actually, we're, we're all bipolar. Why? Because people have tremendous highs when they're successful and tremendous highs when they're up. And when they have a bad day, oh, they should. talk about people that are in investment banking. Guy makes a $10 million, he's high riding in the sky, calls a wife, good, we get tickets to a, a, the, the best restaurant in Manhattan or some show and this and that. And the next day, he goes and loses 12 million bucks. <laughs> He said, oh, and the guy is so down that he wants to, he's thinking about Harry Carey, like the Japanese say. People are crazy. No, no, no. So Rabbi Nachman tells us in Psalm 139, Rabbi, uh, excuse me, King David says this in Psalm 139. In Psalm 139, he says, Im shamayim shamata. When I'm so high in the sky, there you are. Imatsia sheol hineka. If I'm falling rock bottom in the purgatory, there you are. So when I'm high, there you are, Shem. I see you. And when I'm down, there you are, Shem. So having a Muna and having a Shem in our lives, this takes us out of the manic depressiveness, the bipolar, and keeps us on a more or less even keel. Now I'm gonna get ahead. I can't, I can't resist this. Okay, excuse me, Rabbi Natan. Secrets, King David. Was he was Mashiach? I get I get chills when I tell this. You can't have a, a body seismograph on the screen. I get chills when I teach this. King David says, "Im esak shemaim esak." When I'm going up so high, esak is the letters kasa kuf samach aleph. That's why the Arizal. That is the up name. That name, that whole name we learned with the casa, what you see on your list, that is the name that is with you when you're on an up cycle. And the name on a down cycle, which Rabbi Nachman was going to teach us, the Tehirik, the Tehirik is the bottom point of the Aleph. We already learned this. It's the bottom point of the Aleph. That's what destroyed a Malik. It destroys a Malik. What destroys a Malik? Well, we can hold on to our Muna when we're on rock bottom. This destroys a Malik because a Malik wants us in depression. A Malik wants us to roll over and die. A Malik says, forget about the Muna, forget about Hashem, heaven forbid, forget about this. No, but when we're dead rock bottom, that's the Herik. And that is the name Sag. We'll soon see. That is the name that goes with you when you're down. Hashem's name is with you when you're up. Hashem's name is with you when you're down. So this is why we learn these two names, because we want to have an expertise in being up, knowing how to behave when we're up. What's the expertise of being when we're up? That I'm not going to boast. I'm not going to brag. I'm not going to look down at anybody else because it's the Ferris wheel. I'm going to go down. So let's taste the good time when we're up and remember when I'm down, that I was once up, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to be up again. I'll be up again, so I'm not going to be down. And when I'm down, I'm not going to be sad because and this is my chance to destroy a Moloch down here. This is my chance to, to show myself my Amuna, to, to prove it to Hashem. That this, when it's down, what's the, the, the fighter that's a hero? Not that comes out and knocks that opponent in, in 20 seconds. It wasn't a match. No, but the guy that, that took these difficult punches and he got hit really hard and he got knocked down, he got up, he got up, and he got up. And find the 10th round, he throws a knockout punch and he wins. This is the hero. This is a really heroic. And, and this is what, this is the hero that a person is when he's down and he holds on to his muna when he's down. 
This is Sag. That's the name that's with you when you're down. And that's what King Stephen is telling us in 139. That, oh, when people pass that, that the whole passage, it, it, it's a Kabbalistic passage. And the Arizal picked it up and Rabbi Nachman picked it up because it said, I level him. Wow. These are the secrets that Mashiach is showing. There's such secrets and every word of Psalms and every word of Torah. And this is just Rabbi Nachman just scratched a little bit of the surface. This is sounded light show. So we understand, hold it. So what's this, the three names that came together with the Gematria 112, that the names of Yabek, the Gematria, these three names that come out to Gematria 112, the Yabek. Turn the letters around. The Yud, the Bay, the Bay's, and the Kuf. Turn the letters around, you get Bucky. Bucky is expertise. So it's the Yabik, the two tight two Yabiks are Derek, the ways. We turn around two Bucky's. This is the secret that Rabbi Nachman is teaching us that the two types of expertise, expertise in being up, expertise in being down. This gives us derech. This gives us our way to Hashem. This is our way to Hashem. This is our way through the sea. That the whole world is like a, a, a stormy sea. But this is the way that we're to get to Hashem. Wow. Unbelievable. Take it. Excuse me. Take a deep breath and a sip of tea. Wow. Hashem. Excuse me for over enthusiasm, but I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't get used to it. Every time I see this, this is just that it, it, it's unbelievable. So now we learn the secret of ascending and descending. If I ascend to the heavens, there you are, Shem. And if I'm down to the level of purgatory, there you are, Shem. Wow, Hashem, there is no place in the world without you. That's it. There cannot be a place on the earth without Hashem. People say, where's Hashem? Open your eyes, open your heart. Hashem is right there with you. That's Hashem pumping our hearts. Hashem do Wow. So now Rabbi Nachman says, the simple explanation is so the simple meaning of everything we just learned is that if a person wants to walk the pathways of repentance, you have to understand what the pathways of repentance. I said, why? Well, what do I need to repent? I got Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur every single day. It's like saying, what do I need to take a shower for? I got Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. <laughs> this is uh, penitence every single day. This is why Rabbi Nachman tells us to do he'd bodedut every day, to, to do uh, self-assessment every day. This is our spiritual shower. We check ourselves today. And, and one thing, and you do serious he'd bodedut. Hashem shows you stuff that you would have forgotten about. You know, and, and my he'd bodedut today, I found myself doing all types of terrible things. I wouldn't have forgot about it. They, they were little, but Shem says, no, they're not little. You think about it. Now stop and think what you did all day long. Stop with thinking you said all day long. Stop with what you thought all day long. So imagine to go into Rosh Hashanah on Kippur, high holidays, and not having done tshuva for that. We cannot afford to miss a day without self-assessment. Let's so imagine just if a person is lives in a warm climate and doesn't take a shower, and he walks in the street and whoo, 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 yeah, I don't want to go near that person. This is what happens when a person doesn't do tshuva. The, the, the good angels, they walk the person, ooh, Shem, I can't be that person. It's got a spiritual, nah, doesn't smell too good. Okay, this is, so a person that wants to walk the path of penitence. If you saw a person who really wants to get close to a Shem, this is a person that does self-assessment every day. Because if I want to get close to a Shem, and everything I do, heaven forbid, that goes against the Shem's will, is like an iron curtain between me and a Shem. I got to knock it down. I can't have partitions between me and a Shem. I need a Shem in my life for as strong as my soul could accept divine light. 
and then work to get stronger and work to get stronger to get more divine light, more divine light, more closer to Shem, closer to Shem, because that is the whole purpose of this earth. The whole purpose of this earth is not to come and uh, that people say that one one thing, there, there's no concept in a, a Muna observant lifestyle is leisure time. There's no such thing as leisure time. My leisure time is talking to Hashem. And leisure time is they go and take a walk. That, that's talking to Hashem. There's no such thing as, as a moment without serving Hashem. That's like a moment. Okay, take a rest for breathing. The, 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 the heart, turn off your heart for a while. Turn off your lungs for a while. Can't do that. We can't turn off our neshamas. Because when a person turns off the neshama, uh oh we learned in the introductory lesson, 13 Principle of Muna, what happens when a person signs off on the neshama, then the liver comes in. And the dark side that's down in the liver and the spleen, ooh, they take over, they vanquish a person's body. And a person can't feel any spirituality at all. So if a person wants to walk the pathways of penitence, he has to have a lot of fortitude, has to be brave, and constantly strengthen himself or herself in the way, derech, of Hashem. That's derech, the way of Hashem. Derech Hashem. There's a book by the Ramchal, the way of Hashem, when he talks about how to serve Hashem, Derech Hashem, Derech Hashem by the Ramchal. So what's the Derech? There's two ways on that Derech. There's a Derech, there's a way of Aliyah, a way of ascent, and there's a way of Yerida, a way of descent. Learn this in physics. Sir Isaac Newton taught everybody this, that what goes up must go down. Everything has an equal and opposite reaction. That then You can't have an up without having a down. And the down is going to bring a consequential up, but it's going to be going even higher. So if a person, it's really the same thing. We all want to be happy. We all want good times. But if a person ascends to heaven, sees a shem, and a person is a, say, okay, you're sleeping in purgatory tonight, heaven forbid. Okay, Shem's down there too. Shem's there. And he sees a shem wherever he is. So he's not going crazy with ego on the high spiritual level and looking down at people. In other words, you have one thing. If we look down, heaven forbid, at any other human being on earth, uh -uh. then we got to go back to the books and learn more about humility, what it means to be. We can't look at another creation. We have to look at ourselves. Look at ourselves because this is not a life and getting close to Shem is an individual, let's call it, if you want to call it a sport, it's an individual sport. It's not a team sport. If you're on your own, you're competing against yourself. You're competing against your own evil inclination. All of us are. So we have to be an experts at knowing how to act on the good times, on the ascent, and knowing how to act on the dark times. And that's the, ex, that's the expertise of Shuva. And that's the two Yaviks, with your two Baki, turn around, the expertise plus expertise gives derech. Now we can understand this whole thing. This is how it all boils down. With all these holy names that we learn, we have expertise plus expertise gives the way to Hashem. And this is how to boil it all down and everything falls into place. Okay. V'ken la'efech. Rabbi Nathan continues, Afilu imi pol chas v'shalom l'mkom shipol afilu b'shol tachti כן, אם כי אש עצמו לעולם, ותמיד יחפש ועקש השם יתברך, ויחזק את עצמו בכל מקום, שהוא בכל מה שיכול, אם בשל תחתית נמצא השם יתברך, וגם שם יכולים לדבק את עצמו אליו יתברך, וזה מבחינת אמצעי השור כנקה. רבי נתן was the champion of self-strengthening, what we call התחזקות. So רבי נתן says right here, okay, let's put aside the up times, up times, our, our, our biggest fear is arrogance, boastful, being smug. We have to keep maintain our humility. But down times are dangerous because people fall into despair. People fall into depression. People fall into a feeling that Hashem doesn't love them. It's the exact opposite. Hashem is bringing the person down. So the person has to make effort. This is spiritual resistance training. You don't build your muscles unless you have resistance. You have to resist. You have to have weights, <laughs> lifting metal. This is spiritual resisting training because you have to push to get back up. You have to work really hard. So Rabbi Nathan says that even God forbid, we don't we don't want to fall down, and we don't want anybody else to fall down, and we certainly don't want to sleep tonight in a 
hotel named Purgatory down in the deep, even though Shem's there. No, we don't want to be down there. We don't want to be down there. But if we would fall, if we would fall, Rabbi Nachman used to say, even if I would make the biggest sin in the world, I wouldn't fall into despair. I do tshuva. He said, I do tshuva. And Rabbi Nachman was the one who made the song, Ein shum yeush ba'olam. Amar Rabbi Nachman, ki b'chol makom shenafalta l'sham, nimsayit Hashem yitbarach. There is no despair in the world. Teaches us Rabbi Nachman, because anywhere you fall, Hashem is right there with you. Oh, yo, 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 yo. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wherever we are, we have to seek Hashem. We have to ask Hashem. And today, the moment I felt what was going on, the intellect, okay, hey, who, who, who invited you? Who invited you to the party? Get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Okay, intellect, come on, you get out of the way. And intellect says, oh, where, where's Hashem? You see, Brody's not with you. To, to, Get out of here. Get out of here. You, the, the itty bitty, uh, nasty committee, uh, you're making my heart. Right? That, that's a shem. That's a shem there. Okay, so shem's playing hide and seek. You know, I didn't feel it because I've got flesh and blood eyes, and a shem's playing hide and seek, and I don't see him right now. Okay? Feel him, but hold it, focus, stop. It's an hour, spend time with the shem, out of the office, out in the field, and but feel, feel the heartbeat. Feel the heartbeat. I think that's if I would have to take a stethoscope and put a microphone on it, and you can listen to my heartbeat, and it would say, Yudke, Bovke, Yudke, Bovke, Yudke. That's a Shem. That's a Shem's name. Every heartbeat. Imagine contraction. Shem's heart. Shem beating the heart. So, what's Rabbi Nathan teaching us? That we can find a Shem anywhere in the deepest purgatory. This Cherish brothers and sisters, this is anti-depression insurance that don't need, that if a person has neuroses, okay, but that neurosis, a person got psychosis, okay, needs help. But a person has a neurosis, it doesn't need to run for like, the meds and run for doctors, run, it's, it's run to Torah 6 and run to the field. Run to the field and run to Hashem. This is the importance of people to do it, where Rabbi Nachman stresses it. And you can see the underlying tones of the necessity to do daily personal prayer and daily self-assessment throughout Rabbi Nachman's Torahs. Okay, so now we go, and Rabbi Nathan says, This part he wrote after Rabbi Nachman passed into the next world already. That uh, He says that Rabbi was exacting, may rest in peace, the Karayin Yan Zabalashon Baki, that the Rebbe, when he said that we have to have this expertise, which in Hebrew is Baki, this was very intentional because everything that came out of Rebbe Nachman's mouth was intentional. That Baki is the combination of letters of Yavik, Hashem's name, that we have Hashem's name with you and you have this expertise and you feel Hashem with the uptime and you feel Hashem at the downtime. The person needs tremendous expertise. That there is no vacation from serving Hashem. That if we're on the ups, have to serve Hashem. No, you do not, not, not a, a high roll. It's not Las Vegas where you're in a roll. And what do they say in Vegas? I'm going to roll, winning the money. No, 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 no. Because if we win the money, they're letting you win some money because now you're going to lose three times that much. Okay, so you're winning, you'll be Hashem with you. You're losing, Hashem with you also. Hashem with you also. I know you said in, in our gym, in high school, in high school wrestling team, the coach put a sign on the ceiling. It says, if you can read this sign, you're losing. <laughs> so sometimes we can read the sign because we're on our backs, but you got to remember Hashem is with us. Hashem is with us. Even when we're losing, we have to remind ourselves that Hashem is with us. And uh, if we're down, so we yearn to go back up. And if we're up, it's not good enough. I'm not yearning close enough to Hashem. You have to yearn to go to a higher spiritual level. But to know the higher spiritual level, I have to go to down, well, up, and teach you another secret. This is a different Torah, but I teach you right now because it's appropriate to learn it right now. People think that they fall. And I hear it all the time. People, Rabbi, Phil. You didn't fall. You didn't fall. Imagine that the way to Hashem is a circular staircase. And on one side of the staircase, there's a window and the sun shining. 
but on the other side, it's dark. You're going up all the time, but sometimes you see the light and sometimes it looks dark. Oh, all of a sudden it's dark. No, but keep going up. You're going higher. You can get higher. You can't get to that brighter light at the higher level unless you go through the darkness first. This is the whole thing. So it, it, it can't have a spiritual gain, just like, again, with the, with the, resistance, uh, the, the resistance example, the, the metaphor and, and resistance training, that a person can't have the stronger muscle without the resistance. A person can't have the stronger soul without the resistance. So don't be complacent when you're up, go higher. And don't be sad when you're down. Hashem is with you. It's a preparation to go higher because Hashem loves us. Imagine who doesn't want to bring their son or daughter closer to them. Suppose you live in Texas and your son or your daughter went away to college. And now they call up, they graduated. Mom, dad, guess what? I've got this fantastic job offer in Houston. <laughs> well, they're in the Houston suburbs. They're delighted. Then my 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 son and other come close to they come come close to me. As delighted as you are, Hashem is a million times much more delighted. Okay, we could go on a, a tiny bit further. And Rabbi Nathan says, "Al pi sod ne'alam ze sod kavanat elu ki baki uprinat shem yabe kanal u otiot baki." He's explaining what we already explained. That he's saying that the letters and expertise, Bucky, they come from the name Yabik, just turned around. Dino Bucky, but so we have the two Buckies that equal the Jerech. You have a Bucky, an expertise in being up in the ascent, an expertise in being down, knowing how to act either way. And these are the twice 112 that equals 224, which is the Jerech. And this is the Kavona of uh, the. Kabbalistic teaching for Elul, and this is the name behind the Sag and the Yabek. And this is the deeper meaning of the two types. Well, we learned in Psalm 139 from King David, Imesak Shamayim, that the name going up, that is the name Kasa, and Atsiya Shol, that the name going down, that's the name Sag. They're all indicated in that. Okay, so I think we've had a mouthful tonight we need a, a breath in and to review this uh we will continue on next week next week uh we will god willing hopefully complete uh torah vav and we got a few minutes left so everybody with my, my blessings to everybody should have a, a wonderful weekend shabbat parah